Oh, where's my tea? Where's my tea? Uh, in this episode, I'm going to tell you how I maintain this little nano reef system. You've guessed it. Let's roll those tiles. Welcome back to the channel guys. One of the most demanded videos in the comments section is show us how you maintain your nano reef aquarium system. It kind of links to my previous video on how I run my nano reef. I'll put a link uh, somewhere on the screen here. Check that video out. It's one of the most popular videos on the channel and I did it about a year ago. So this is how I clean up my dirty nano system on a weekly basis. I'm going to show you what I do, all the tips and tricks and Probably nothing special to be honest, but this is what I do and I've been doing it for three and a half years and it's going pretty well. Before I start my maintenance though, I've got a couple of things that I'm missing. I'm missing some live phyto. I ran out of phyto about two or three days ago. Yeah, two or three days ago. So I'm going to nip out, I'm going to nip to my local LFS Dobbies. I'm going to take it with me and pick up a few bits, hopefully some copepods, uh, some phyto, all the good stuff that I use when I do a little bit of maintenance. So here we are guys, just arrived at the, uh, my local LFS. This one's about five miles from me, and it's actually part of a Dobby's garden centre. You may have seen these, they're like a national brand. And it has fresh water and salt water as well uh, here. And just let you see, it's an absolutely beautiful day. It really is beautiful, beautiful, sunny kind of winter's day. It is quite early guys, it's about, uh, it's about nine in the morning at the moment, so it is quite empty. So this one, this Dobbies is actually in Derby, uh, so it's my local one. And if you go to the wards at the back, up, just up here, past the, uh, the pet area, we then get to uh, Maidenhead Aquatics, there you go guys. So let's, let's, let's ask the guys if we can film. And we'll take a little look inside. Here we go. So when you come into the store, guys, you're greeted by this beautiful saltwater aquarium. And I need a little bit of a confession, actually. This is the first aquarium, saltwater aquarium, that I actually saw. And this is the one that got me into the hobby. So back in 2019, uh, yeah, me and my wife came in. We had a little shop around in the, in the garden centre. I came for a cup of tea and a biscuit. And I came in here and I was like, oh, I'd absolutely love a saltwater reef tank. I would really love one. And this is the one that really got me started with the hobby. This uh, beautiful saltwater tank in here. We've got some clownfish. We've got some chromus uh, up there, kind of schooling, schooling chromus there. We've got uh, lots of softies. It's predominantly a softy tank, catch this one. Uh, we've got some leather corals, some mushroom corals. One of the biggest sections of green star polyps I've ever seen. They're really thriving there. GSP. Some nice anemones there. The back with the clowns in there. Getting a little bit of reflection here. I've got the orange lens on as well, guys, just to try and give you a better look. We've got some zoas. So yeah, a oh, huge bit of GSP at the back there. So yeah, predominantly a softy tank. But that is the tank that got me originally into the saltwater hobby. Fantastic, isn't it? Really nice little setup as well. So just been chatting to some uh, fish lovers in the store. That's the great thing about coming down the LFS. You get to speak to people and chat about the hobby. They've just set up a brand new four foot tank. I'm a bit, a bit jealous, really. Um, yeah, really exciting times in the hobby. So this is where uh, I like to come and get my usual bits and bobs. So these are the fridges. Oh my dodgy film in here. So these are the fridges, guys. So this is the one that I really come for today. I'm glad they've got it in stock. We've got the live phyto. I've been dosing this for three years now. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's other brands, but this one's the one that I've stuck with. The Colombo. It is brilliant. I really do think that makes a big difference to my reef tank. Let's have another look inside. All the goodies are in here. So we'll get some pods whilst we're here. I like to get a good handful of pods. Uh, we've got there four. There's actually quite a few in stock today. We're in, we're in luck, guys. So we'll get five of them. And then they've got some of the brine shrimp down here as well. Let's get some of them. We'll treat the fish today. Seeing as it is maintenance day, we'll give them a good treat. And again, we'll get about four of those. They do do a little offer, I think. Let's have a look at the offer that's on. Yeah, it's four for five pounds. So that's quite reasonable, isn't it? So there we go. I think that's what we've come for today. So I just, I love the natural foods and the live foods. I really think that's helped. 
And this is, uh, this is my secret place in Derbyshire where I come. Not very secret, like. But this is where I come and get my foods. So there we go. That's what we're going to be taking home with us. So they have got a small range of freshwater tanks as well. Different sizes, as you can see. Uh, but unfortunately, guys, for the lovers of this channel, there is no saltwater tanks on sale directly on display. Um, but I believe you can order them. Uh, if you get in touch with Maidenhead Aquatics, you can order um, you can order saltwater tanks hitch. Ooh, wow, he's huge. Wow, Oscar, wow, you are a big boy. Uh, £56, that's a lot of fish for £56. Yeah, a lot of fish. I mean, these freshwaters do look really nice, don't they? Yeah, with the different colours again, uh, different variations. We've got the barbs, we've got the tetras. Yeah, lots going on here, guys, lots and lots. In fact, whilst I remember, just up here, actually, is our frozen section, and I do need some frozen food. Again, this is where I get my frozen food from. So let's have a quick look in here. Um, I like to get the marine mix, uh, this one here. I like to get a bit of marine mix. What else have we got in here then? Lots of different ones for fresh water and salt water. Uh, we haven't got any lobster eggs. I do like lobster eggs. What's this here? What is that? Cockles. Mm. I don't know what that's really for, to be honest, guys. Uh, brine shrimp. We've got Marie. Yeah, let's get some mysis as well. We'll get those two. So, again, this is where I come and get me... Uh, be frozen. We'll stock up on frozen whilst we're here. Let's have a look how much it is. Two ninety nine a blister pack. Two fifty when you buy. Four. Yeah, pretty reasonable. Right. Let's check out this uh, all this salty goodness down here. So this is the marine section. I'll just show you uh, what's what's in stock in case you're uh, looking for anything in particular. We've got the clowns. We've got the chromus. Yeah, I do love the chromus. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Oh, wow, look at the butterfly fish here. What is that one there? What is that, guys? I should know what that is, shouldn't I? Um, Long-nosed butterfly, that is. Uh, there isn't a price for him. It's a beautiful fish. Oh, wow, look at that butterfly. Super tiny, tiny, tiny fish there. Really nice. Oh, there's a little scooter down there. Didn't even spot that. Yeah, lots of choice, guys, and everything's looking super super clean and everything's looking super healthy yeah we got the the uh the blue cheek goby he looks pretty cool as well stands out let's take you up here got some more angel fish very reasonably priced as well uh fire fish uh, yeah really really nice marine fish we've got uh he looks a little bit grumpy i don't think he realizes it's the uh if, if you do something, you might get bought and go into a nice, beautiful tank. Uh, yeah, I've got, oh, there's a lovely, oh, I think I've uh, spooked it. The purple tank, how much is the purple tank? Uh, oh, I can't see, there it is, look, wow, absolute stunning fish. I think he's a little bit spooked by the camera, so I'm gonna move on, guys, I don't wanna upset him. Yeah, oh, what's this one here? There's, a, there's quite a lot of tangs in stock at the moment. Look at that, brown, that bright pink one. It's like some sort of damselfish again. Yeah, that's really, really nice. And we've got a nice little collection of colourful fish in this one. What is that one there? Is that a, looks like some sort of wrasse that does. I don't actually know. Which one's that one, guys? In the comments, it's really nice. Super colourful. Yeah. Uh, really, really pretty. In fact, there's some lovely fish in there. We've got some more at the top there as well. Yeah, absolutely packed out today. We've got the uh, fox face. We've got a lovely Achilles tang. Look at that. It's quite a small one as well. But a beautiful Achilles tang there. That looks super, super nice. Yeah, and that's it. So lots in stock, lots of fish. Oh, a yellow tang. Wow, look at that, guys. Yeah, these have really shot up in price recently. This one here is a tank bread yellow tank. Uh, 250, 235.99. Wow, look at that guy. Yeah. The, the porcupine puffer, 69.99. He's fantastic. Don't think he's easy to keep though. 
In fact, yeah, I think maybe those um, those cockles, as it were, are probably for, for the puffers to feed those. Yeah. But lots of fish, as you can see, guys. Loads on offer. And uh, we're just going to check out the corals as well. We'll put the lens on so we can have a little look and see what's uh, in the coral bays. So we've just got the uh, orange lens out, and here we can see a cowfish. <laughs> he looks pretty cool, doesn't he? Great addition. I don't think they're very easy to keep, though, as far as I can see. So we've got some corals here, this one. Uh, got some nice, affordable uh, pieces. Got a huge zoa garden there. It's not quite opened up yet this morning, but it's, uh, it's, a, big, it's a big piece for £48. We've got some nice little bit of GSP. You definitely want to be on YouTube, you do, don't you? Yeah, the star of the show is the cowfish. You could be the thumbnail, maybe. Maybe the thumbnail. So we've got some pallies at the back. Ooh, I keep away from them. They can be very toxic, these here. These are pallies. Uh, we've got lots of GSP, lots of leather corals. Let's have a look this way. Here we've got, ooh, my favourite section. I didn't even they had Gonipora, yeah? So they've got some Goniaporas, really affordable, £25 a frag. Uh, I think they're green ones, these ones here. And then we've got some nice Blastos. Yeah, some lovely Blastos. Oh, look at the clam. So they've got a Maxi Clam, £138. Yeah, I know uh, Steve and Tom would love that. In fact, as well, just speaking out, Steve, uh, there's also a Bubble Coral here as well, you see that? I know Steve likes his bubble corals. That's definitely worth a thumbs up, that is, if you're watching. I love that red starfish. I need to do a bit of research on these starfish because I'd really like one. But I don't know if uh, the hermit crabs or something like that would attack them. There's quite a few in here, actually. There's one down there. There's that one there. Looks really nice. Yeah, I don't know uh, much about the starfish, but... And we've got a little LPS section at the end. So we've got some frog spawn, we've got some torches. Got quite a lot in stock, actually. Yeah, they look like purple and green. But again, yeah, lots going on. Temp 24.6. And then at the back here, guys, we've got some cleanup crew as well. Uh, what we've got in there? I've got a blue starfish there as well. That is really nice, actually. It's pretty big. Too big for my nano tank. Then we got some leather corals, um, a, a little purple dotty back. Yeah, there's a purple dotty back there. He looks cool. And then we've got some bubble tips. Very, very popular in the hobby. We've got one of them little beautiful red starfish down here. Look, guys, just clean on. I do need to have a little look at these. In the comments, do you have a starfish? Any tips for me? Are they any good? Are they uh, easy to keep? Are they good cleanup crew? I just love the colour though, it's really nice. And then last but not least, something really unusual here. We've got a pipe fish. There we go, look at that pipe fish there. Yeah, he's pretty nice. He's not cheap though, is he? It's £69.99. Uh, you do have to have kind of a bit of a dedicated tank for that one as well. Uh, because they don't like too much flow. So there you have it. A really nice little setup for the coral section down here at Mainhead Aquatics in Derby. Yeah, and I've seen this area grow actually quite significantly over, over the uh, last couple of years that I've been coming. And I, I would say they're getting more and more stock in and more and more choice and it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna go and pick up the things that I've purchased now off the till. It's been absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoyed my visit. I hope you have to Mainhead Aquatics in Derby. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to Deanna and Kieran who uh, work here today. They've been absolutely fantastic for letting us film. Uh, so thank you to you guys. You've been very professional, giving lots of advice and lots of support. There's lots of people in the shop. They've been busy ever since I've been in, doing a fantastic job advising new reefers and new uh, aquarists in the hobby. So this is where we're going to leave you guys. We're going to head back now. We're going to do our maintenance. But yeah, Diana and Kieran, cracking job. Mainland Aquatics, thank you so much. Three years of keeping me in the hobby. So if you are heading to Mainland Aquatics, not only is it for fish lovers and coral lovers. Oh, there's a lovely dog there, by the way, guys. Uh, there's also a restaurant here. 
so you can stop and have a cup of tea and drinks and, and have lunch and things. So you can make a little bit of a morning of it, it's really nice. Got some lovely cakes on offer, <laughs> not that you might want to look. You can even have a beer if you want to, but yeah, lovely cakes on offer. Lots going on here. And they've got a little cafeteria section. And uh, yeah, you can sit and eat some food as well as do some nice shopping for your fish and your corals. And we've made it back, Maidenhead Aquatics. Yeah, check out the link in the description of this video. It's well worth a visit if you're into your fresh or your saltwater aquarium. Now here's my nano aquarium, looking pretty dirty at the moment. Uh, we're on 11,500 Kelvin on the Radian Gen 5. That's what I'm f filming it on at the moment. But yeah, it's looking pretty dirty. Sand bed's a little bit dirty. The glass is a little bit dirty. Yeah, and the water just needs a little bit of a maintenance. So this next bit is gonna be really helpful for any, any newbies or anybody with a nano tank. So step one, just gonna top up the reservoir with some fresh RODI water. Just so it's at a nice level. So I do like to set everything out before I, when, before I start my maintenance, just to make sure that I actually get everything into the tank that needs to be. So I've got me kind of my polishing cloths for the glass and also spillage cloths because you always end up spilling water. No matter how experienced you are, you always end up spilling water. I've got me cleaning equipment, my scraper, my um, turkey baster and my toothbrush. Obviously got a cup of Yorkshire tea there. And then I've got all my dosing stuff. So I have them out just to make sure that I've dosed each one after my water change. And then I've got my refractometer salinity pen, which we're going to use now for step two, which is to mix up some salt water. So we're all powered up here. We've got our heater that's programmed for 25 degrees. And then we've got our very basic 1499 Amazon pump. And that's going to mix the salt water up in the next half an hour. So we'll start putting some salt in and making our salt water for the aquarium. So Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt. So this bag, this box actually lasts me around about six months, something like that. <laughs> so that's quite a long time. I know, oh, sorry about the noise guys. I know some of you reefers will go through a box like this very, very quickly. But yeah, it lasts me about six months. So I just use a standard cup. Here we go. So there we got my, put the salt in. There's a cup full there. This takes about a cup and a half, roughly. So there we go, let's try and... I can always add more, but I can't take any out. So I'll just leave it at that for now, guys. Let that mix up. And then we'll come back in about half an hour and just check the salinity uh, on our salinity pen. Yeah, no point doing it now, because it's obviously just got in. But we'll mix it first, and then we'll check the salinity using our HANA salinity pen. So whilst that salt water is mixing up, uh, let me tell you about another little issue I've run into. So if you remember on my previous videos, I used to have a J-Bow wave maker right at that back corner as like a bit of a supplementary flow. Uh, and then last week or so, it's broke. So I've gone on to uh, eBay and I've bought a brand new J-Bow uh, 010, perfect for nano, uh, nano aquariums, a new secondary wave maker. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you've got J-Bow, uh, if you've have had J-Bow pumps, return pumps or wave makers, they are fantastic value for money. So my last one, it was, was it three, three years it lasted? Three years and it was about 40 pounds. So I thought, you know what? I think that's brilliant. So I've gone out and bought basically an exact replacement. I love these. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get something that moves the water around your aquarium really well. You've got a strong magnet there. You've got a very functional multi-directional head. I like to point mine at the surface just so it can aerate the water and it just creates that random turbulent flow and as I say this one was $59.99. It's just gone up a little bit in price but yeah super super little wave maker and uh, yeah I know we've got J-Cod and J-Bow. I don't know if you've used any of their products but yeah hit us up in the comments. Have you used J-Cod or J-Bow stuff? I really rate it. So we've just run the power lead for the wave maker through the back of the tank and that's in position. And yeah, and this is the, the control panel. So it's a, 
a DC pump, you can control, let's say, the speed. So you've got wave one, so that creates a wave motion, obviously. You can change your speed. Uh, you've got uh, sync, which is W2. That helps you to, if you've got two or three of them, if you put them on W2, they will sync together. And then ELSE is the one I have it on. That's the random flow. That's my favorite one. So I tend to have it on low speed, ELCE, random flow, and then we'll just dial it in. And it just gives that extra random turbulent flow that your corals need. So we've got the wave maker all attached there. I've just got my, uh, my 3M tape pad. This is what I attach all my controllers with, my D&D controllers. So just dead simple. Just like stick it pretty central. There we go. And uh, th yeah, this is the cheap version of 3M, but it's just as good. Uh, it'll hold it for the next three years, hopefully. Let's take that back off there, like so. And then we're going to stick that to the back of the tank. So we've just got our control panel for our wave maker there. I've just set it on L E L S E on the lowest speed. And you can see there that black shiny wave maker is just in position where the old one used to be. And it just creates that really nice, you know, agitated surface, which you really need for oxygenation, kind of buffers your pH as well. It's exactly what you need that. And then you get that nice random movement of your Heavy corals. Now mine have been without that for about a week, so they're going to love this. Uh, just a bit of extra flow around the tank really does help, especially in these mixed, these mixed reefs. So let's go and check on the salt water and see if we can get on with this water change. So just a quick check on the water situation. So we're at 1.015, so I need this to get to 1.026 uh, specific gravity. So I'll just give it a little bit of a blast around. We're at 21 degrees, so about four degrees away. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. You gotta kind of do it slow and steady, a little bit more salt. So we've only had that wave maker in for about five minutes, guys. Just have a look how much the reefs responded. So those torches and those LPS, the gonies are now fully extended. Yeah, never underestimate how much f variations of flow you need in your reef tank. So whilst the salt water's mixing up, we're now going to get a little bit of water out the tank and then I can start to clean the glass, clean the rock work, get any algae out. Um, so that's what I like to do next. So whilst the salt water is mixing, I do as many jobs as I can on the reef so that when the salt water's done, it can just go straight in. So we've got this little siphon pump. This was off Amazon again. Uh, we're just going to get a little bit of water out. There we go. So just make sure, guys, that you've switched your auto top off off. Uh, switched off at the plug, mine is, otherwise it's going to throw loads of that fresh water in there and that will really mess with your salinity, so you don't want that at all. I also do this as well because I don't want to, I need to wash my hands, so I wash my hands in some of the water that's been siphoned uh, to make sure then that um, there's no contaminants on my hands and I'm not polluting the tanks as well, so I just turn that return flow off as well. So I just take enough out just before, it, just below, below the weir, so you can see the weir here. Yeah, so just below the weir level, I take that amount of water out into the uh, into the siphon bucket, and then we'll give our hands a quick wash in that water uh, before we put them in the tank. As I say just to avoid any contamination of the water. So I think that's enough there. So we've just dropped that water level down, all the pumps are off, all the flow's off at the moment, and my hand has been washed in the water that I've just siphoned out. I'll never put my hand in the tank, I'll try not to anyway, best I can, without giving it a good wash with some of the old water that's been in there. So let's have a little look then. The first thing I always do is uh, scrape the glass. So we'll get the grass scraper out. Not very exciting, so I'm going to show you all of this, but yeah, just try and scrape the glass the best I can. I do this every day anyway just makes the whole job a lot easier. So just scrape off as much of that glass as you can, giving it a really good, a good clean. So I'll do that job, and then I'll get back to you in a minute. So I've cleaned the front panel and the side panel. I use a little toothbrush just in the corner bits, just so I don't damage the uh, seal, or the sealant, that just cleans off the corner bits as well. Gives them a little clean, uh, with a soft, a little soft toothbrush really does help to get those bits clean as well. You never get everything off, do you? That's it. But you do get 
most of it. And the glass is so important because that's what you you see the beauty of your reef through, especially if you're taking pictures and stuff. You want it nice and clean. I also need to move some of my wave makers when I clean those as well. So just so I can clean the glass. Just re rearrange a few bits here. So I kind of shuffle anything that's stuck to the glass around. And then I can clean the glass where the wave makers were. There we go. Which doesn't get cleaned as much because I don't want to move that. There you go, the fish are having a, a nice pick at the algae there. That's our Blenny. He's loving that. Yeah, feasting. And that's another thing about it. I know people get kind of het up on the algae side, but it is, it is a building block of any reef. You've got to have algae. And uh, the fish, yeah, they like it. They like it as well. Yeah, they'll pick at it as well. Um, it's major food source. So I think with algae, it's just about maintaining the levels. And if you do your weekly water change and your weekly maintenance like this, you can just keep that algae under control and uh, maintained. Right, I'm gonna clean this side here. I'm gonna move the frag rack, have a little clean behind here, and then we'll put it all back. And that's the glass all clean. So our little frag rack's got a bit of algae on, so I'm just gonna give that a little brush off. Any little bits of algae, I'll just brush off here. We've got little bits of algae on this SPS as well here, look. Uh, just at the tops there. So we'll just brush that off as well. Yeah, I tend to just pick it off like this and just put it in the bucket. Yeah. Oh, whoa, guys, 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 whoa. And that's what happens as well. <laughs> that's why you need a towel, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully you guys didn't get wet there. Uh, yeah, so the, the wave makers are on a timer of 10 minutes. So if I just lift it out the water a bit, a bit more, there we go. Then next time, if it kicks in, it's not gonna throw a little bit of water out of the tank. Hey, dear. <laughs> It's all part of the fun, isn't it? So I did say, look, yeah, you do need the towels on standby because you are gonna, you are gonna spill water. It's just inevitable. So that's that. Whilst the wave makers out of the water as well, I always give them a little brush over. I know every so often I'll give them a really deep clean with citric acid, but just for the time being, there isn't much on it because I do this every week. Just give them a little brush off. Anything to the water column. Just brush that down and then it all just stops that build up thing is with this maintenance you can't miss a, you can't miss a week yeah every week just do this have a little little spruce around a little 10% water change and it really does make a difference so that one's done with the wave maker obviously that doesn't need cleaning because that is brand new uh, I'll just put that in but yeah, right, so we'll bob, bob these back and then we're going to clean this bit of glass on here and then I'll get onto the back wall, just give that a little scrape as well. So the next step is I use the turkey baster and then I'll just turn over the sand. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that guys? Yeah, hopefully. So I'll just blast over the sand a little bit. Now I do this every week. If you haven't done it for months and months, perhaps do, don't do this because you'll cause a huge spike in nitrates and phosphates. But I like to just turn over my, the top layer of the sand just to keep it nice and clean and nice and white, as you can see. So mine's used to this. A little bit of a blast about around the sand bed, anywhere where there's a bit of detritus building up. There we go. Around that, and again around this side. Just keeps that sand looking nice and white, which is what we all like if you've got your sand bed. But as I say, uh, when you do this, I would recommend, if you haven't done it for a while, just clean a little section, maybe a quarter, and then do the other quarter next time. If you, do, if you haven't cleaned it for a while and you've got loads of detritus in there, yeah, perhaps don't do this, just leave it as it is. You don't want to cause any problems. But I've done this since so every week I just blast over the surface and it just seems to keep it keep it a little bit cleaner which I think as well makes the corals look nicer. I'll also use it just to blast off any green on the rocks so just blast any bits of green off there any bits of algae 
can see a little bit on here as well. And if it's a little bit stubborn, like that bit is there, I can get the toothbrush in and I can just brush it off with the toothbrush as well. So the next thing I do after clean the glass, clean the rock work, clean the back wall, clean all the corals, they've all had a good blast. The next thing is to change some of my filtration. So let's turn everything off, the skimmer's off now. So down this, this chamber here, this is the return chamber. I always put some, whoa, some filter floss, as you can see. Now I'm just checking it for these little guys here, look. So these little guys, little pods, little copepods. pods, hopefully that's coming out on camera. Yeah, we don't want to lose these, these friendly guys. So I'm going to put him back in the water, hopefully. Look, they're all on my hands here, look. There you go, look, there's another one, a copepod. So that's going to go back into the reef. Hopefully the fish don't spot them, otherwise they'll, they'll eat them. But yeah, they get caught up on the filter floss, which is, yeah, well, they're doing a good job there, but I don't, I don't want to lose them. So I think we've got them all off of there. So I'm pretty happy with that. That can just go into the bucket. And there's another bit down here as well in this return chamber. So I always have floss in this return chamber. It just polishes that water up before it goes back into the tank. And again, um, you can see how dirty it gets. And I'm just seeing if there's any pods on there. You lot might think I'm a bit crazy doing this. But I don't want to kill anything. And things like pods, you definitely want to keep them in your reef. So, yeah, I don't think there's many on that little bit. Can't see any in there anyway. So that can go in the bucket. Also, from the original days, uh, we've got the good old-fashioned sock. Here's our Max Nano sock. And again, we've got quite a lot of pods on this as well which is good it's a healthy sign check out the video for is it four signs of a healthy reef tank and pods are definitely one of them there's one up here so i don't want to get these out of the reef as best i can he's not coming off though is he uh there we go let's get him on here jump on can't get him oh there you go there you go look so he's, there's a little pod on my nail We'll get him in, away from the fish. And he will do, carry on his life in the little Max Nano. There's another one on my thumb there. They seem to kind of jump off, which is good. Yeah, there's one. So let's keep him in there as well, a bit of food. So I'm going to clean this sock out, give the sock a good clean, and then we can return the clean filtration. So let's do that now. So this is the uh, filter floss I use. You can use pretty much anything you want, but I just use this one. Uh, it seems to work pretty well, and I've used it for a good few years now, the Simac one. So I'll just get this opened up. This is a new one. I've recently bought this, and I tend to just use a little pad like this. And I don't, I don't change it out for a week. So this will stay in for a, for a week until I do my next water change. I know some people like to change it every two or three days but I just don't see the need in my little tank to do that and also I don't want to uh, strip out the nitrates and phosphates too much so there needs to be food in the tank as well so I tend to just yeah, get kind of a bit like that six by four inch roughly and then I'll split it and I'll put one down one side of the return the other bit down the other side of the return in that final chamber and that just polishes the water before it goes back in so let's put that into there Put that into the uh, into position. It also protects the life of the return pump as well, so it stops it kind of getting gunked up, uh, and it doesn't need it needs less maintenance. It should last longer as well, in theory. That return pump should last longer, so that's all good. So we've got new floss in. We've changed our we've got our clean um, filter stock. I'm just going to enter, empty the skimmer cup, which is always, always pretty grim. And I do this once a week, so I only skim enough to, to clean once a week. I don't want to take, again, don't take too much out. If you're emptying the skimmer cup, probably every, um, every day or every few days, maybe you're skimming a bit too much, taking too much out. So, yeah, that's, um, that's after a week. It's about half full. 
So we're going to empty this down the uh, down the toilet, and then I know what you're going to say. What the hell? That's not clean. And to be honest, that's how I clean it. So I I just use a bit of toilet tissue just to wipe the surface of that top bit there, and then I'll put a bit of toilet tissue through here. Just click, push it through, uh, clean this bit. So this bit's been wiped out. I've wiped a little bit of that out. But yeah, your skimmers need to be a bit slimed up. I know that's not exactly clean, but keep a bit of slime on it. Keeps them nice and quiet as well. So there we go. That's that's that. It doesn't smell. Well, I can't smell it anyway. Maybe my nose doesn't work, but let's put that back in there. Back on there. So that's all the filtration clean. Clean the sock, new floss, and the skimmer cup is clean. So we're going to get the rest of the water out now, guys, and then we're ready to put the fresh water back in. So we spent about 20 minutes just getting everything into the water column, cleaning the corals down, blasting the sand bed, and now just getting the rest of the water out of the tank, about 10, 12 litres out, using the siphon. And then we can put the new water back in. So we'll just give a little check on our uh, salinity. So we're at 1.025, that's perfect. And at 25 degrees, it's all mixed up nice and clear. So that is ready to go into the tank. So we're ready to put our freshly mixed salt water back into the tank. You can use a pump, uh, you can use a siphon, you could use uh, a plastic cup or something, but I just like to pour it in ever so gently. And with it being a nano, there's not much water there is either. I'm just like, pour it in gently, there we go. So I'll do this and then come back to you once it's all into the tank. So we're now going to replenish some goodness back into the tank. So the next thing I do is put the, the bacteria in because I've been scrubbing the rocks, I've been scrubbing the sand bed. So we need to just replenish that bacteria levels. So let's give it a good shake up. Oh, this is Eco Balance by Dr. Tim's. I've been using it two and a half years and I cannot uh, recommend it enough. Uh, sportive bacteria, kind of balanced pHs, balanced uh, water chemistry, and it gets rid of vibros, which is things like cyano. Uh, it probably also helps to fight things like dinoflagellates as well. So really good product. So give it a good shake. And after a water change in this 20 gallon, 75 litres, I always put one full cap into the water. So there we go. Just near the return pump. Give it a, a little drip out there. So that's one thing we always do is to replace our bacteria. So water changes can be quite aggressive on these little nano tanks. So I like to condition the water. I put the bacteria in. Now I'm going to put this CVE. I really like this Coral Essentials. Uh, it's kind of a blend of aminos. And I always put one mil of this in after a water change as well. So we'll go with that. It's basically a coral food um, that helps with coloration and, and feeding. So there you go. One mil of the uh, CVE. Absolutely brilliant. And that just goes into the reef. So I'll put that in there into the display. Third up for replenishing all that good stuff is manganese. Now I've got a lot of torches, I've got a lot of gonies. They love this stuff, reef elements manganese. So I always put a little bit of this in after a water change. So again, it's uh, 20 gallon, 75 litres. So I'm going to put in here half a mil, which I know is not a lot, but I dose this every three days. So I'm going to put in half a mil, a bit too much there. Uh, that's a mil, a bit more out. There we go. So there we go, half a mil. And that will go into the return chamber here. Uh, it goes into there. Let's put that in. Just a few drops. As I say, I dose that quite regularly. Every three days I put manganese in and that really does help as well. So we're still replacing all that natural goodness when we've done our water change. So this is the Colombo Live Phyto that I picked up earlier. It stays in the fridge, I've just given it a little shake. And I am quite generous with this stuff because I do really rate it. I've been using it for uh, over two years now. I'm getting to it, oh, there we go. And uh, I pour a good generous amount into that display area just near the return pump. There we go. And that will really help those little pods help any of the microfauna in there and it's definitely one thing that I'll always dose after a water change. Thing always to remember is to put your ATO back on 
that's my ATO back on. So that's all up and running again in there. So that's looking pretty good. Really happy with that. And just to double check our salinity levels, now the water's been mixing for a good five minutes. Let's just check those salinity levels with the pen. So I'm hoping for 1.026. That's the magic number we go for in this tank. So let's have a little look. Let's see where it is. 1.026. And there we have it, guys. So that is 1.026 specific gravity. And that's what this little Red Sea Max Nano runs at. So another job I always do when I maintain it is just to check on my dosing lines. So at this point, I'm just checking if they're blocked, making sure that they're not blocked. And I'll do a little, um, a little dose, a little flow cal calibration, just to make sure they're flowing around, make sure they're working properly before I uh, kind of finish up. So we're gonna put some copepods back into the reef. I do this every four weeks. So I don't do this every week, but it's good practice to put your pods in there. It's always good. So just a little pair of scissors. And I know people like to, they can filter it out with a, with using coffee paper, but I'm just gonna put them straight in, into the tank. You can see them there, all the little pods. So I'll pour them in there. The fish are gonna love these. We've got four bags. So I think what we do is we put two bags in the front. Hopefully they don't get eaten, all of them. So two bags in the front. Give them a little rinse out. There we go. And then we're gonna put two into uh, the back as well and hopefully then we can culture in the back a little bit as well. In fact, no, we'll put three in the front. Let's put three in the front. So we'll put three in the front here. The fish are probably going a bit crazy now with all these fresh pods. In there, there we go. And we'll put this one into the back, into the back chamber so that they can culture in there as well. They'll definitely go through the filter sock because they're so small, they won't get stuck by the filter sock. So I'll pour these into here, down the back. There we go. There's a few left in. Let's just tip them ones in there. So I'm gonna put a few drops of Red Sea Iodine. Again, I've been doing this for about three years now. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes since I put the manganese in, so I'm gonna put the iodine in there. Really great for coral health and coloration. So here we go. Again, 20 gallon this is, 75 litre. I'm going to put half a mil in here. And then in about three days time, I'll put another half a mil in as well. So there we go. Pour that in. So as you can see there, that's half a mil. And that's going to go into the return chamber here. Not in the main display, into the return chamber. Just a few little drops in there. And then again, that's really good. That and manganese, really good for mixed reefs. Uh, LPS reefs and softy tanks. So the last thing we're going to dose into the tank is this mangrove mud. Again, I've been using this for about two and a half, three years. Um, I dose a tiny bit every time I do a water change. So this is natural mangrove mud from Fiji. And this is great for mineralization of your water and your corals. So this is, uh, yeah, well, this is what I do every single water change. Just put a little bit of this in. It's pretty, pretty good. So first of all, I grab a little, what is it, like a little dosing pot, and I'll collect some of the tank water up. Just collect a little bit of the tank water like that. And then we get our hands in here, <laughs> always fun, and literally grab a little piece. Um, yeah, maybe that's a bit big, yeah. A little bit of the mud. Ugh, look at that look. Uh, a little bit of the mud, and it's just like clay, really. And then I mix it in here. Yeah, I mix it in with the uh, the tank water, the salt water. You get it all over your hands. This is why you need your little towels and stuff. So there we have that. Give it a little mix in. So it starts to look like this. Kind of a, a sediment-rich water. There we go. And then... Let me just lift you up a little bit, guys. We're gonna put this right next to the wave maker. In fact, let's put the lens back on so you can see what's going on a little bit better. There we go. So here's our miracle mangrove mud. 
we're just going to pour that next to the wave maker. There we go, look. And give it a little rinse out. And there you go. You can see how that miracle mud, uh, that mangrove mud, is just kind of settling through the water column. And what we'll do now, we'll have about an hour or two just for letting that mix in. And also, guys, uh, it gives me a bit of time to tidy up all the mess that we've made here whilst we've been doing our water change. And we'll come back in about an hour or two and we'll have a good look at this reef tank and see what it looks like after the water change. So we're just going to give the fish a little treat after all that activity with the water change. As you can see, uh, things are starting to settle down now. So we've got them a brine shrimp that we picked up earlier this morning. I'm just going to take that off. Uh, we're just then going to pour it through a little sieve because we don't want all that kind of brackish water in the tank because we don't really know what's in there so we're going to just filter that off and then we're going to put these guys in there there's a real treat a bit of live a bit of live brine shrimp so there we have it that is the water change done I'm just going to put the filter lens on just so we can see it a little bit better there we go and that is what it looks like now after the water change. So that's how I've maintained this little nano reef system for the last three years, every single week. Hope you found that useful. Uh, yeah, hit us up in the comments if you've got any tips or advice, or you've still got questions that you want to know about this little Red Sea Max Nano. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to ha answer your questions and help you out as much as I possibly can. These little Red Sea Max Nanos are fantastic little tanks. I can't sing its praises enough. This is the, the traditional cube one. I know there's an XL one and there's a Peninsula one as well. They're fantastic for anybody who's thinking about starting the hobby, any beginners, uh, but also for those people wanting to downsize, have a bit more of a straightforward tank, but still love the reefing hobby. They are absolutely fantastic tanks. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button as well. It's absolutely free and it really does help to push out this content to other reefers around the world and it also helps to bring you new fresh content on this channel. So yeah, really, really great if you can do that. Also, if you want some more reefing goodness, some lighthearted reefing chat on a Friday night, 8 p.m. GMT time, uh, that is our Friday night live stream. It's Fish Palace, Moggs Aquarium, Jay's Real Reef and TB Corals. Yeah, I'll link all their channels in the description so you can check them out. But next Friday is on Paul's Fish Palace uh, YouTube channel. You do not want to miss this one. It is the three year, yes, three year anniversary of the Friday night live stream. Honestly, cannot believe it. It's been a blast. You don't want to miss this one. It's a special edition of the Friday night live stream. We're going to thank all our regular viewers with some great gifts. Uh, yeah, so you don't want to miss it. Join us on the chat this Friday, 8 p.m. As I say, the link is there. Also, we've got some breaking news on this next live stream. Uh, if you're in the UK hobby, uh, it's a big bit of news. You don't want to miss this. All breaking uh, next Friday. If you want to check out the tank uh, more frequently, we have an Instagram channel. It's Jay's Real Reef UK. More videos posted on a daily basis and photographs to keep track of the tank. I hope your tanks are going well. I'm going to wrap the video up now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.